I'm going to call the uh, November 7th, 2023 City Council meeting to order here at City Hall. Would the clerk please confirm the roll? All council members are present with the exception of council member got help, Your Honor. Thank you very much. And if we go to the flag salute, Mr. Rosen, it's a special night for you. Thank you very much. Council, I uh, want to let you know that we are not going to be having an executive session this evening that's on your uh, agenda at the end of the night. Um, but with that, if there are no other changes, can I get a motion on the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Motion carries. It is unanimous. Citizen comments. This is a time during the meeting where if you have comments to share with council, you're uh, on a topic not on tonight's agenda, you would step forward. If you're here in City Hall, if you're online, please indicate in the chat box and you'll be called upon. We'll start here in chambers, you get up to three minutes, starting with your name and address for the record. Go Deb. and I'm here to talk to you again about Artist Sunday. November 26th from 11 to 4 o'clock, the Outlet Mall has given us a large vacant space to hold an indoor art market. So we just found out about eight days ago, we already have 32 artists signed up. I think we can take more than 45. So we're counting on it being pretty big. <laughs> so please come out and really support your local artists. This is really the national, it's a national day to support artists by shopping local art and getting creative gifts for the holiday. So we will have music, we'll have art projects for all, all ages, and we have a real Santa. Um, so it's in time that you can get your Santa photos for holiday cards. So make sure you come out and support the local artists. It's gonna be a really fun event. And again, right here at the Outlet Mall. <laughs> Questions? Thank you, Dick. Okay, that's it. Fantastic. Anyone else here in chambers? Seeing nobody rushing to the podium. Do we have anyone online? No one online at this time. No online. We'll move on to introductions. Item number six on your agenda is AB 23-129. This is a public hearing. This is an ordinance adopting the 2024 property tax levy. Mr. Buddha, would you care to open the comments? Oh, we got a presentation. Give him a moment to get set up. Thank you, Mayor. Just one second here as I set up the to share my screen. And I'll just share with Council while he's getting that up, a reminder that uh, while we are opening the public hearing, tonight is just the introduction uh, and no action is expected tonight other than moving it to the November 21st meeting. All right. Uh, thank on. you, Mayor. Good evening, Council members. I hope you're all doing well on election night maybe even a little giddy. <laughs> well, <laughs> certainly from experience, I know there's nothing better than spending some quality time with your finance director on an important night like tonight, discussing one of my favorite subjects, property taxes. Not really, I'm just kidding. Anyway, uh, to begin with some of the basics, the first you should know is that our property tax system is ingeniously complicated. And that complexity will color everything that I say here tonight. Currently, the vast majority of states use a rate-based property tax system. In general, cities under this system would first establish and approve a rate, and then using the assessed valuation of property would estimate the amount of property tax revenue to be collected. However, the state of Washington, as unique as it is, has chosen to use a budget-based property tax system. This means that cities, as a part of their budget process, must first establish the total amount of property tax revenue they wish to collect for the upcoming year, subject to certain limitations. Once the total amount of property tax revenue is determined, 
The county assessor will then calculate a rate based on the total assessed valuation of all properties in the city. Now, I mentioned the limitations in establishing the amount of property tax revenue a city can collect. The most significant limitation is the allowable increase percentage. And this is sometimes called the 1% limit factor or 1% increase. And it restricts how much the city's legally allowable levy can grow each year. The limitation was enacted by the state legislature in 2008 due to concerns about property taxes rising faster than inflation. Now, when I mentioned the legally allowable levy, I'm referring to a statutory maximum property tax revenue collections that the city cannot exceed each year. According to statute, the legally allowable levy amount will not increase more than the allowable percentage increase or the rate of inflation each year, whichever is lower, plus an additional amount generated by new construction and other add-ons. Now, it's important to note that council is not required to levy property taxes up to the legally allowable levy amount. When a decision is made not to levy up to the full legally allowable levy amount, then the city will generate something called banked capacity. Bank capacity is the difference between the legally allowable levy amount and the amount actually levied, less funds not included in calculating, calculating the legally allowable levy amount, such as refunds. The city may use its bank capacity if approved by council, but can never exceed its legally allowable levy amount. So with some of the basics covered, what the administration is recommending in terms of the most significant limitation, the allowable increase percentage, is option number one, which is listed and drafted in your agenda bill, which includes a 0% allowable increase percentage for 2024. In addition, the administration as part of the ordinance is asking to certify regular and excess property taxes in the amount of 2.51 million and $179,000 respectively. All right, so with that said, let's run through the makeup of the numbers. On this slide, you will find a table comparing the regular levy for 2023 with the proposed regular levy for 2024. The column for 2024 includes last year's actual regular levy, the percentage increase recommended by the administration, which in this case is zero, and add-ons for new construction, utility value, and refunds. In terms of the numbers for 2024, the administration is proposing to levy $2.51 million dollars in regular property tax, which is roughly $120,000 more than the regular levy in 2023. This includes an increase for new construction, utility value and refunds, and crucially, does not include an allowable percentage increase. As written in the footnote, the increase in utility value will not be known until December, which is after our deadline for turning in an ordinance to the King County Assessor's Office. So right now, it's just an estimate. In addition, the administration is proposing to levy $179,000 in excess property tax, which is the amount needed to make the annual debt service payment on the 2011 voted fire station bond. The bond, as noted, is scheduled to mature in 2030. Next, the assessed valuation citywide for the 2024 tax year is estimated at 2.85 billion, which is roughly a 1.7% decrease from the 2023 estimate. And finally, assuming that council passes the property tax levy as written in option number one, the total levy rate is expected to increase slightly from 88 cents per thousand dollars assessed valuation to 94 cents per thousand dollars assessed valuation. And just to provide some point of comparison with our kind of neighboring jurisdictions for the most part, North Bend is pretty low when it compares to other cities across the region in terms of the amount of property tax that we collect overall. But there certainly are other jurisdictions that do make a, up a sizable chunk, which is what you can see here. Um, and so consequently, per $1,000 assessed valuation citywide, including all jurisdictions, uh, uh, the King County Assessor's Office is charging $8.58 per $1,000 assessed valuation, but only 88 cents of that is coming back to the city of North Bend. To assist you in understanding the impact of option number two, should council select it, the following table gives you a sense of how much the allowable percentage increase available to the city North Bend this year and equal to 0.95% or $23,000 would impact a property owner of a certain valuation. In this case, if your home is valued 
at $1 million for 2024. Then as a result of the allowable percentage increase included in option number two, you would pay an estimated $7.95 more next year than option number one. A very common question from people is where does the property tax money go? Well, to give you a sense, for every $1 paid a taxpayer pays in property taxes, the city of North Bend collects roughly 10 cents of that. With the Sideview Parks District, King County, State of Washington, the Snoqualmie Valley School District, and other governments, including the library system and hospital district, receiving the remaining 90 cents out of every $1 paid in property taxes. And just to break that 10 cents down just a little bit further, three cents goes to pay for police and court services. A penny goes to support our fire and emergency management. Can't see that under my screen here, one second. Two cents goes to pay for parks maintenance, street maintenance and facilities maintenance. A penny goes to help support our community and economic development department. And there's also another two cents for administration as well, such as HR and finance. And then lastly, there's another penny here for other things, including human and social services, kind of other miscellaneous items. And we can even take that just a little bit further to give you a sense of what this means in dollars. If the taxpayer pays $8,600 in property taxes next year, which is roughly the equivalent of someone that has a $1 million home, then approximately $860 of that supports the city of North Bend. If you break it down a little bit more, an estimated $258 per year or $22 a month, of that $860 that you're paying goes to support the uh, police department. Uh, $86 per year or roughly $7 per month supports fire services that we provide to the community. $172 per year or $14 per month supports the operations and maintenance of our park streets and facilities. $86 per year or $7 per month supports our community and economic development department. And another $258 per year, $22 per month supports several important government services, including human and social services, legal, human resources, finance, and others. So a very common question from people is where does the, um, sorry, let me move right along on that one and pass that slide up. Oops. All right, so finally, and as a reminder, we often get this question, how much in property taxes will I pay next year? And the answer is it depends. It depends on the actions of other governments, such as King County, State of Washington, the Snoqualmie Valley School District, and voter approved levies. It also depends on the timely flow and sharing of information with the King County Assessor's Office. The Assessor's Office is working hard constantly to provide us with updated information that we can incorporate into the ordinance. But lastly, and maybe most importantly, it depends on how the value of one property changes relative to the value of other properties. There's a chance that while you may experience a property tax increase, your neighbor may actually experience a property tax decrease. This is because your overall share of the property tax budgeted by council may change as your assessed valuation goes up or down relative to others. Therefore, it can be difficult to ascertain what will happen to each individual homeowner or property tax owner until the property tax dust, so to speak, has settled. Next, but not least, property tax relief. The administration understands that people may struggle with their property taxes during a time of immense inflationary pressures and other challenges, and wishes to acknowledge the available exemptions or deferrals on offer through the King County Assessor's Office. One available exemption is for senior citizens or the disabled, those who own and occupy their residences as December the 31st with at least an 80% total disability rating and a limiting income can receive an exemption from some of the property taxes they owe. In addition, the King County Assessor's Office offers a deferral to senior citizens or the disabled. The income limit is slightly more than the exemption and if approved, the applicant can defer their property tax liability to a later year. However, it's important to keep in mind that through this program, deferred taxes plus accumulated interest will become a lien on the property until the total amount is paid. Last but not least, the King County Assessor's Office offers a limited income deferral program. 
It is available to individuals who have owned and occupied their property for five or more years and have a disposable household income of less than uh, $57,000 in the previous year. Someone approved for this program can defer 50% of the property taxes they owe, and the deferred taxes plus accumulated interest will become a lien on the property until the total amount is repaid. And just for some more information for the public here, we've got uh, the website from the King County Assessor's Office, some phone numbers as well that we can certainly be posted to the website once we're completed. And just to go over the next steps really quickly in terms of property taxes, at the next council meeting on November the 21st, council will need to choose an option and then approve the ordinance as is or as modified, especially so that staff can submit the ordinance to King County by their November 30th deadline. Between now and the next council meeting, if you have any questions about how property taxes work or in general, don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, over the next few weeks. And so with that said, thank you very much for your time. And now I'd be happy to answer any sort of clarifying questions you may have, or I guess the public hearing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Drew. Council, before we move to the public hearing, are there any clarifying questions at this time for Drew? Seeing none. Hey, I have one. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Drew. So when we talk about the 1% every year, is that based on Tim Einman switched the property tax increase some years back. I, I, it's a vague memory, but so I don't. Hopefully, don't want to necessarily wade into political waters when it comes to that. Indeed, there was an initiative back in the early two thousands um, that I believe was ruled unconstitutional by the state supreme court. But subsequent to that, the state legislature decided that indeed um, that that was something valuable that um, state should have. And so the um, your legislatures at that time voted um, in favor of that. And that is the system that we have currently as we speak. And to that point, before that time, what were they raising property taxes in the era per year? Um, so I do not know. I was probably in high school at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you forced him into a really big disclosure. <laughs> uh, I can certainly look into that and get back to you. Thank you. <laughs> Anything further? All right. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Step away for a moment here. And with that, we will open the public hearing at 719. If you're a member of the public here in chambers or online and wish to speak on this property tax levy, please approach the podium if you're here in chambers uh, or indicate in the chat box or by star nine if you are online. We are going to keep the public hearing open through uh, the second reading on November 21st. Not seeing anybody rushing to the podium here in chambers. Do we have anyone online looking to speak at this time? Not at this time. Okay, thank you. With that, then, Council, I think we're ready for a motion. I think it would be appropriate to look to um, finance and administration. The chair is not with us tonight. Who's second on that committee? Mr. Elwood? <laughs> Motion to continue the public hearing on the ordinance setting the 2024 property tax levy until the November 21st, 2023 City Council meeting. Second. Motion a second. Any further comments? None for me, Your Honor. Thank you. I uh, just thank you for a lucid and insightful presentation on a very complex and hard to understand topic that I think for folks who want to try and understand it. That was the clearest representation of the complexity of what we face and what the people who live here face in trying to deal in these waters that I have ever witnessed. So thank you. For those comments. And if I might add, Drew, I feel very similar. And I think the layman like me out there appreciates a very clear entity of speaking into something that can be uh, misconstrued very easily. So thank you so much. And all the people that helped you as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Anyone else? I agree. Thank you, Drew. That was really well presented. Great. Okay, council motion 
for you is to continue the public hearing on the ordinance setting the 2024 property tax levy until the November 21st, 2023 City Council meeting. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. We'll move on to second introduction of the evening. This is item number seven on your agenda, AB 23-130. This is also a public hearing. Ordinance adopting the 2023-2024 mid-biennial budget modification. Mr. Buda, you're back on stage. All right, uh, thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna stay seated this time. Uh, good evening, council members. Once again, before you tonight within this agenda bill is the mid-biennial budget amendment. It is prudent financial practice to periodically adjust an adopted budget to reflect major changes to sources, such as revenues and transfers in, or uses such as expenditures and transfers out that occur during the year and were unanticipated at the time of budget adoption. Budget amendments are the tool by which the city can address these unforeseen changes and ensure that it remains within its legally authorized budget limits. Within this agenda bill, the administration is requesting an additional appropriation of 7.23 million to cover multiple amendment requests, including setting aside funding to continue discussions on the 2024 decision card process, establishing two new funds, the Reserve Fund and the Affordable Housing Fund, an appropriation to support a property acquisition if needed, and other smaller funding true-ups and requests that primarily reflect agenda bills council passed earlier in the year. The additional appropriation of $7.23 million that includes a $2.45 million increase in transfers out to other funds within the city would be supported by an approximately $3.87 million in unaccounted for revenues such as unrecognized grants, and transfers in from other funds within the city, and approximately 3.36 million in fund balance the city carried forward from the previous biennium. And uh, this is really the first budget amendment. We'll probably have more certainly in the next year uh, once I get more of a grasp on what we're doing here at the city overall. And so with that said, I'd be happy to entertain any clarifying questions now or over the next few weeks before it's scheduled adoption on November the 21st. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Drew. Uh, Council, any clarifying questions before we open the public hearing? Seeing none. We'll open the public hearing at 724. If you are a member of the public here in chambers or online, this is the time for you to comment on the budget amendment item. If you're here in chambers, you move to the podium. If you're online, indicate in the chat box or by star nine. Seeing nobody rushing to the podium, do we have anyone online? Not at this time. This time, all right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Elwood, I think we'll turn back to you for a motion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, let's see, let me get on the right page here. Okay, I move to conduct the public hearing and move ordinance forward to second reading and adoption at the November 21st, 2023 City Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments? No, Your Honor. No, sir. No one else? Okay, motion before you to conduct a public hearing. Did you see some? No, sorry. Motion before you is to conduct a public hearing and move the ordinance forward for a second reading and adoption at the November 21st, 2023 City Council meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, it is unanimous. Thank you very much for that. And with that, we'll move on to Mayor, Council, Administrator, Concerns and Initiatives. Uh, Ms. Miller, we'll start with you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, ton tonight, of course, at 8 p.m., we hope that all people, citizens in this area have put their ballots in. I just wanna say personally, thank you to the community for all your kindnesses throughout the last six months. Uh, it means everything to me. I also wanna thank all the in interested individuals out there that took positions to run for office. Congratulations, I think you're all winners. And uh, thank you, Rob, for being a honorable man. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Owen. Yes, I, I'd like to extend uh, that out a little bit more, um, especially to the, the candidates, but with a greater eye on the fact that our local community had a really good turnout this year for elections, which is great because it provides the community with different options and it actually keeps us frosty, so to speak. Um, but the one cool thing that I noticed is as I was out there talking with folks, I, there wasn't a lot of negativity. 
which is great. Because when you look at what's happening at the national level, it gets really scary and freaky. So it's wonderful to know that in our beautiful community, we aren't really seeing that. Sure, there's butt bruising and things like that here and there, but by and large, people were getting along, speaking respectfully, coming at it from an angle of their perception and wanting to share their worldview in the community here uh, in a friendly, positive way. So, so I do want to acknowledge all the, res the respectful behavior from the candidates that I observed. Um, and I also want to acknowledge the, the respectful uh, citizens and the residents who approached me along the way. They were also very curious. There were a lot more people talking to me now about very, very important issues. And, and all in all, it seemed like a really wonderful point in time for an election year. So I'm really thankful for that. Um, and good luck to all of you who are running. And uh, hopefully uh, tonight will be pretty good and clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, I'm just going to give a little weather report, I guess. Uh, it's it, uh, Daylight savings time happened, of course, and so it gets dark early. There's leaves about. The rains are a lovely, wonderful thing uh, for the planet and for us and for the water supply. Um, and while we're hunkering down for fall, it's also a really good thing that the rains have come back. So uh, I just want to acknowledge that and thank, uh, I know it was awfully nip and tuck uh, on the part of Public Works and Mr. Rigos, and he provided us regular updates, which I very much appreciated to keep an eye on it. And I don't know all the data that you look at, but it's a big deal. And it's one of the core services that the city provides. And I'm glad that I think we have safely crested uh, out of what was a dry period. And uh, that's great for all of us. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rosen. Sure. Um, real quick, thank you again, staff, council for tonight. Greatly appreciated, more than you know. Um, I'm glad to see, I think, as you mentioned as well, so many people running for office. And it's, uh, it's, it's a sign of a healthy democracy when you have people participating. And I agree, I think, with Brendan. The national level, it's gotten, it's gone sideways, but not here. And it's great to see the Valley still being civil and appropriate and participating in democracy the way it was meant to be. It uh, makes me proud to be here. And I think that's probably how we all feel about it tonight. So thank you all candidates who stuck your neck out there and, and around, appreciate it. Yes, Colin. On that same vein, thank you to everyone that ran to be an elected official. It's a big deal. And I'm grateful to people that take the time to step up. Also, thank you to everyone that voted. That is also a big deal, and I appreciate it. It's important for our democracy. On a second note, Veterans Day is this Friday, and I would like to thank all of our veterans and their families for the contributions to our community, both in and out of uniform. So thank you, veterans. Thank you for calling attention to that. I appreciate that. Um, I'll lead off. I've got a, I've got a couple of the uh, regular updates for um, citizens, but I want to, I want to echo what the council members have said. It's, it's, it's been, uh, it, this has been an unusual election season to have so many council uh, seats up for election, including, uh, and then also the mayor. And uh, as Ms. Miller said, it's been wonderful to have a, a, a very positive race overall. Um, and that's a good thing. Uh, and in addition to that, there's um, uh, election for the park district. There's the school district. There's the hospital district. There's the pool bond. So this is pretty big local election for us. Uh, gratified to watch the returns numbers going up. Uh, was pretty concerned uh, that, that uh, there was going to be low turnout and with some rather important things on the ballot. This is going to be a very different uh, also election in, in uh, for many of us in that we we're seeing a, a, a transition regardless of the results over many years. A little earlier tonight, uh, for those of you that don't know, we were uh, celebrating uh, Mr. Rosen's service on the council. Uh, we only have a few more meetings to torture him. Uh, we're going to take advantage of every one of those. Um, but it's it's a it's a major change between Mr. Loudenbach and Mr. Rosen uh, uh, stepping away from council. And so uh, it's a little melancholy, I guess I'm going to say for me. So I wanted to share that uh, those thoughts with you. Uh, I do hope that everyone out there 
exercise their most fundamental and precious right that we have in this country and that is that of the vote um you know as council members know we hear a lot from the public unfortunately often it's 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 the folks that are upset more than the folks that are positive um but the number one way that we we impact what goes on is by exercising that vote and guarantee you there are those out there that it would be just happy to take that right away from you uh let alone be just as content that you don't exercise it so i hope you did with that back on to more mundane things there will be a partial lane closure on november 8th on east north ben way near the new dahlgren park between 9.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Uh, I believe that's tomorrow. Drivers will experience traffic delays while a crane is being maneuvered through, up, through the work area to deliver new playground equipment. So that's a cool thing. So please be patient with them. Uh, just also as a reminder, as mentioned a moment ago, Friday is Veterans Day. City offices will be closed. Uh, that's for Friday, November 10th in observance of Veterans Day. Please save the date of Saturday, December 2nd for our Holly Days event. The event will be held from 5 to 8 p.m. in downtown North Bend. And during that time, we'll have a tree lighting. Finally, and this kind of follows up on uh, something Mr. Jawson was speaking about, rain. Well, rain uh, can bring localized flooding. And you can do your part to help us with that by being sure to clear neighborhood storm drains and culverts. Fallen leaves that pile up in the storm drains on our streets, blocking rainwater from draining, can lead to neighborhood flooding and worse. Please call Public Works after hours emergency number to report any major flooding or storm drain issues. Council, as a reminder, uh, next week, we will be holding a special council meeting on Tuesday, November 14th at 7 p.m. here at City Hall. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Did I miss? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> motion is second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you much, council. Thank you, everybody that's here.